So I, I'll read a poem of his and then one of mine. Uh, it's called Lives of the, of the Veterans. Byzantium was once a city in the Bosporus, famous for talking fountains. World War I made everything evaporate. At the time, it was the saddest thing. Men limped around London and Berlin with shards of it sticking out their movements. Some came back with idiotic ditties trapped in their hippocampus. Others strolled around for hours in wet dresses, fleeing at the lowest possible speeds. This was before television, so folks just looked into the fire and said what they saw there for entertainment. Lots saw hell. Did they have it better than us? When a woman smoked, it was like she was naked, so that must have been fun. Certainly, they were accustomed to death, having done so much of it. Their doctors spent all their time figuring out what was killing you, then killing you with something else. No need for a lawyer. The rat was huge. Into the breach, stiff upper lip was huge. When a dough boy missed his sweetheart, he couldn't just write, I miss your muffin, because of the censors. Apollo, who ate the most pussy of all the ancient gods, was out. The Holy Ghost was in. Everyone knew where the Holy Ghost stood on Cunnilingus, even though he was ineffable. The invention of the telephone, machine gun, typewriter, great strides in plastic surgery before there was any plastic. <laughs> Funny thing is, while just about everything was blown up, nothing much changed. So in 20 years, they'd need bigger bombs. And this is something I've had kicking around for a while. It's called People Are Not There. <clears throat> People are not there for us to learn lessons by. My doctor has incomplete fingers, three of them. They stop at the knuckle, or maybe it's two, and a third just wishes it would. When I look at them, and believe me, I am subtle about it, I hear a machine, sharpness on pink sawdust in some farm, and a little girl looking for hen's teeth somewhere. Overnight, someone smashed all the windshields of cars on the east side of our street with a bat and left beautiful webbing to catch the morning light, which made us think in the kind of collective thinking that seizes us sometimes, unaware as virgins, as initiates to the faith. Is providence right-handed after all? My doctor conceals her stunted fingers by curling them all into the bedding of her palm. Even the ones with fingernails and whorls and worry notched into the cuticles with bird delicacy. And I believe it, this new truth, this sleight of hand, in the hush of the examination room, her other hand against my heart. Thank you.